Hey guys, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. Today we have part three in our series of running the GT500 Ford blower on our 5.3 liter LS. And this video has two of my favorite things. Well, at least one of my favorite things. It has boost and pump gas. That's right. One of the complaints I get on this channel is, hey Richard, whenever you run boost on anything, you always run it on race gas or E85. What about us guys that can't get race gas or E85? We run it on pump gas. Well, guys, this video is for you. In this video, we have a direct back-to-back -back comparison between the effects of power on E85 versus 91 octane on our supercharged Junkyard 5.3 liter. Thanks to our adapter kit from the guys at Demuse Engineering, we're able to install a Ford Racing blower, either the M122, the 2.3 liter Trinity, or in our case, we utilized a Ford Racing 2.3 liter TVS blower from the guys at Ford Racing. All of those blowers will bolt right onto a 485360 thanks to that kit from the guys at Demuse Engineering, which also includes an air and water intercooler. So here's the comparison. We know we've run this thing on E85 and it makes really good power. How much less power do we make on 91? Okay guys, it's time to put this on that. Before we can do it, we gotta pull off the truck intake. Okay, before we can jump in and find out how well this combination did on pump gas, we have to do a little refresher course for those of you who are just tuning in. This is actually part three of a series that I've done on putting this Ford supercharger on the LS. So let's look back and see what we did before, and we know how it ran, obviously, on E85, and then we can kind of compare that to how much power we're actually going to lose going on pump gas, because when we run it on pump gas, obviously, we've got to take away a bunch of timing, and that's definitely going to affect power. So to get things started, we ran our 5.3 liter first, naturally aspirated. This was an L33 from the wrecking yard. The only upgrades we did with it is I did put a... Brian Tui Racing Truck Norris camshaft in it and a set of valve springs. These were 26 918 comps that we put in here. We ran it with a set of inch and five or inch and seven eighths long tube headers. We ran it with a Holly HP management system. It had 80 pound injectors in it because we knew obviously we were going to go up and boost once we installed the supercharger kit. So run in naturally aspirated trim. This thing made best power at 30 degrees of timing. And this thing produced 427.7 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 415.8, so we'll call that 416 foot-pounds. But in, in part two, we ran a number of different throttle bodies on this thing. We, we ran this thing with a supercharger in part one, but we ran a bunch of different throttle bodies in part two. The one that made the most power was an oval throttle body from AccuFab, and actually the round 102mm uh, fast throttle body that we used on an LS with adapters on it. You guys can go ahead and take a look at that video if you want to see the difference between the different throttle bodies. We ran it with a 78mm, 
and a 102 and then the oval throttle body and the oval throttle body maybe eked out a couple more horsepower than the than the 102 did both of those throttle bodies were worth a significant jump in power over the stock 78 millimeter, the original truck 5.3 liter throttle body. But run with the oval throttle body, this thing produced a little over 700 horsepower. So we're looking at 703 or 704 horsepower. Peak torque was up near 700 foot-pounds too, although the load in point is just, that's not actually a real number. This thing would curve over just a little bit if I started the load at 3,000 or 2,500 RPM. We didn't do that on this combination. And again, I didn't have a uh, ring gap <laughs> in this junkyard motor in this all-aluminum 5.3 liter, but we were fairly conservative on the tune and stuff. This thing was running about 14.7 pounds, and the boost would fall off slightly to 14.2 pounds with this throttle body. You know, it would fall off dramatically with a smaller throttle body, but this is where we started out. So this is where we went from our NA combination to our big throttle body with the, uh, this was a Ford Racing 2.3 liter blower with the elbow on it and with the uh, Demuse engineering kit basically that allowed us to bolt that Ford blower on our 5.3 liter. It also included an air to water intercooler. We ran this thing on E85, as I said, and this thing made a little, just over 700 horsepower with the blower kit. And so now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran it on pump gas. Now that we've had our refresher course on what happened in the previous two installments by putting the blower on and then doing the different throttle bodies, we're making a little over 700 horsepower with E85 and our big oval throttle body. Here's a reminder what the thing did NA. So we've got a big power difference. We went from 427 to 703 or 4. I'll go ahead and get rid of that. But here's what happened when we installed uh, pump gas in this thing. You can see we dropped power dramatically compared to the E85. And we'll go over why. I'll go ahead and put the timing curve up here because the air fuel basically stayed the same. All we did was we had to pull a bunch of timing out of this thing. So our peak power jumped from 703 or 4, yeah, down to 599 or right at, uh, right at 600 horsepower. Peak torque dropped by about 50 foot-pounds compared to the E85. And the reason for this is because we had to run so much less timing when we're running on 91 octane. Ideally, if I was running this in the, on the street, I, I would also bring boost down because we were still at starting in the load in at 14.7 pounds or so. And then it was falling off to about 14.2 pounds during the run. I probably wouldn't run that much boost on 91. I would just bring the boost down and maybe try a little bit more timing in it, but we'd have to see. But anyway, we dropped, uh, we can take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and show you, I'm gonna put up the timing curve, the change in the timing curve. Now, I'll first show you the timing curve that we used on the E85, and you can see we ran uh, a peak of 21 and a half degrees. And basically the timing, as you'll see when we compare this to the timing that we ran on pump gas, the timing was up basically everywhere. And you'll see also, I want you to note what I did here is we put the same timing value at every boost level. And the reason that I did that is because I didn't want it to change as the boost was changing during the run. You wouldn't normally do this. Normally, as you go up in boost, you go down in timing. And as you go up in RPM, you go up in timing. So you're working both of those through this whole curve. So you'd have different values at every different boost level. But I didn't do that. I only did that so that the timing numbers were consistent for the test for each one of the runs. So here is now the timing curve that we ran on pump gas. As you can see, we have brought the timing down dramatically. Down in, The timing now is down into the 15 degree range at the horsepower peak. It's down as low as 11 degrees on the load in, and, and that's a critical point on the engine dynos. When we're loading this thing in and seeing 650 or 700 foot-pounds of torque on a stationary load, we don't want a lot of timing in it, especially on a motor that does not have um, extra ring gap and especially on one that we're trying to run 91 octane in because you don't want to get into detonation. So you have to be real conservative on the timing and going from 21 and a half degrees down to 15 degrees of timing had a dramatic effect on power. In addition to that, we also lost power from just going from E85 to 91, even if the timing was the same. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly what happens 
running E85 and pump gas with the same amount of timing. So I'll go ahead and put that up. Here is the same combination run on E85, but at the lower timing level. It makes a lot more power. So this is E85 on the 15 degrees of timing curve, and it made 628 or 629, 6, 629. And you can see torque is up everywhere. Basically, the horsepower is up everywhere. The gains are higher at, out at the horsepower peak because you get more of that from timing because we're dropping that quite a bit. And you, and you normally run less timing down near the torque peak, so you don't lose quite as much down there. So here's what happens <laughs> if you guys are wondering. This is your loss from having to run 91 octane. And no, I didn't try any more timing than this on 91. I was holding my breath the whole time that we ran it because running 15 pounds of boost uh, with a positive displacement blower on 91 is not something I would normally recommend on pump gas. Obviously, you can do it and get away with it. On the street, I probably would run possibly even less timing than this with you know 14 or 15 pounds of boost just because on the engine dyno we have a, an unlimited supply of cold air we have an unlimited supply of cold water for the intercooler and all of those things are going to combine if you're grabbing underhood hair, air, air air especially you know all of those things are going to make it a little bit more sensitive to detonation so this isn't kind of an optimized deal but it does go to show you we dropped six degrees of timing and lost like a hundred horsepower going from e85 to 91. let's get to our conclusion Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure running 91 octane versus E85 on our Ford racing blower on our 5.3 liter LS? Well, we learned the following thing. Obviously, putting a blower on an LS, always a good idea. We also learned so far that the truck Norris cam, in addition to being a truck cam and all the and a turbo cam, it's also a blower cam, which is fantastic. But here's the important thing. We can run, obviously, as much as 14 to 15 pounds of boost successfully on pump gas but in order to do that you have to take a bunch of timing away from it now we could have obviously changed the air fuel a little bit but i like running at about 11 and a half to one so it was like is near 11 and a half to one for all of our tests but all we did was strip about six degrees of timing at it going from e85 to 91 and you saw the resulting change in power so if you can't get e85 and you need to run 91 octane obviously you're gonna have to run a great deal less timing on the combination and the result of that obviously is going to be quite a bit less power but it's important to note you can run that kind of boost level with this kind of blower on that kind of motor successfully on 91 octane I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing on our blown 5.3 liter coming up.